Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest edition of, inter our, of our entertainment show where we look at upcoming TV series and movies debuting in Ireland and obviously when they debut in Ireland, they debut in the UK as well for this upcoming month. And our feature this week is a movie that is debuting uh, tonight, March the 4th in cinemas all across Ireland. So whether you're in Clare, Galway, Limerick, Cork, Dublin, Tipperary or one of the 32 counties in Ireland, the 26 in the Republic or the 6 in Northern Ireland, you would be able to go out to your cinema screens there tonight and watch A Day to Die uh, featuring Bruce Willis, Kevin Dillon, Frank uh, Grillo, uh, Vernon Davis, jo Johnny Meisner, uh, Johnny Cabaldi, Leon and our special guest. Uh, we've spoken off a lot of male uh, characters that are going to be on the <laughs> show. Uh, the one leading light, the female role herself is played by... Um, Brooke Butler, who plays the role of Candice. And uh, Brooke, I mentioned some prominent masculinity sort of names there and Kevin Bruce Willis and Kevin Dillon and Frank Grillin. And what's it like to be in an action trailer where the testosterone levels are going through the roof? <laughs> it's a great starter question. I had a wonderful time. I grew up with brothers, so it was felt like family to me. Everyone took me under the wing, under their wing, and treated me incredible. And it was such a fun experience, an action film. It never kept moving. But I will say about this film, um, Candace is definitely the heart, but because of what happens to her, it makes this group of men from you know, different uh, political and social backgrounds have to come together to um, fight for a common good and a common goal, which I think is quite an important thing that's even happening in our world right now. So there's, right, it's an action film, but metaphorically, there's so much more happening in this film and so much more being said in this film. And so I was extremely proud to be a part of it. And I suppose, Brooke, you bring the femininity, do you bring the innocence and I suppose the kick-ass characters that we know of, Frank Grillen, Kevin Dillon, uh, Bruce Willis brings that sort of macho man action sort of trailer to Dan. So what was the sort of working with that sort of crew in between sort of the takes and sort of where they're trying to popping jokes and crack? Was it always feeling like that you were a bit of a, a tomboy amongst the set uh, trying to <laughs> chill out and sort of hang with these guys? I mean, that's how I felt my whole life. So it was it, it was easy and effortless. But yeah, it was also very important to me. I talked to our director, Wes Miller, who was so incredible that I, since I was the main female character in the film, that I wanted her to be strong as well. And she fights back as well. And you'll have to see what happens by watching it. Um, but it was important to me that if I was representing you know, women in that way that I wanted her to not be a victim. So, you know, there's scenes where I fight back and there's scenes where I'm trying to get Leon with a hammer and he's about a foot and a half taller than me. So I'm trying to reach for him, but um, it felt great. You know, I was shooting guns myself, um, all part of the action, part of the soul and the heart of it as well, though. And I kind of add in the love story and some of the innocence as well. And I suppose, Brooke, one thing that struck me about uh, this uh, movie was it was shot in Jackson in Mississippi, the first feature film to be ever shot in Jackson, Mississippi. And it was shot in six weeks, I do believe. And uh, the final shot scenes were in Hawkins uh, Field Airport. But this was April 2021, height of the global uh, pandemic, I suppose. Uh, people not being able to confine to their homes, going around mask wearing, and all of a sudden a big sort of production roll, rolls into a rural sort of town in the middle of Mississippi that is not used to uh, seeing, seeing Bruce Willis maybe uh, 400 or 500 yards down the road working uh, on, on, on location. <laughs> Right. The whole town was incredible. We, a lot of our crew members and cast members as well, were from Jackson, Mississippi. And I will say that that town welcomed us with open arms. Um, we shot in front of the Capitol building, big stunt car scenes. I spent a lot of time at the Mississippi Museum of Art, um, and it was a 
a beautiful city that, you know, there was one scene where we blow up a hearse, not to spoil anything, but it was this, this huge shot that took all day to capture. And we had a lot of the town coming in, but everyone was so respectful. And I think just excited that there was some acknowledgement brought to this town that has so much history and so much life there that it, I hope that they continue to have more movies shot there. And I suppose, Brooke, I suppose we know you've appeared in the Ozark and you've appeared uh, alongside Jason Bateman and sort of stuff. But you still can start to get the giggles or the hype when you hear, right, I'm going to be appearing with a movie with, with Bruce Willis in it and Die Hard and Die Hard 1 or Die Hard 2, probably what you watch when you were maybe a nine, ten year old girl every sort of Christmas every year that the sort of <laughs> colour on. Two years old. <laughs> yeah. Three years old. In terms of every Christmas time they come around roll on the year, your parents everybody knows who who Bruce Willis is that number one Christmas movie <laughs> yeah yeah so was there still a bit of that sort of giggles or sort of style, excitement even though being a well-established actress as yourself or to just take it as a norm really I mean sure I think everyone that worked on that film is iconic in their own in their own way um but for me personally I've done the work. I've grown up on stage. I actually spent a summer in Scotland at the International Fringe Festival performing. So it's in my blood. It's who I am. The most comfortable place for me in the entire world is on stage and in front of the camera. So for me, I gained my respect um, as the newcomer in this arena um, just by doing my work and showing up and being connected. And I think once that was shown, there was a mutual respect. And I had such great chemistry with Kevin. We were able to, you know, our characters were married. So we were able to talk about what our dynamic was like. What, you know, were we in a fight right before this scene happened? Where are we entering? What's our connection? And then also with Leon, who's an incredible actor. I think we approach acting in the same sort of way and a bit of a, a method which created this great energy between our characters that needed to be there and was he the bad guy was he the good guy um, how did I feel in that moment and then also for me um, not to give too much away but I as a kidnapped victim it was also important to me that it not be about Brooke, that it'd be about, there are women that have gone through this, there are men that have gone through this and to represent that feeling and that it's okay to fight back and you know play it smart. Um, so I felt like it was exactly where I belong and where I continue to see my career going. And I suppose, Brooke, in terms of that uh, production, that sort of six weeks sort of cycle, obviously you're based in a small town of Jackson, Mississippi. You mentioned about going to museums in spare time. But how did you find sort of a uh, killing sort of time? Obviously, uh, you're there now at the moment in the sunny hills of Los Angeles, California, where every <laughs> amenity is like a, a stone drop away. A, a, dare I say, even more of a frisbee <laughs> drop yeah. away in terms of of uh, what you can sort of do but what was that sort of like obviously going to a rural town in probably Central America and uh, obviously we did obviously long day shooting and sort of stuff but the downtime there. Well for me I love acting because I love people. I find people fascinating. You know, my friends call me the question asker. When I meet someone new I want to know everything about them and so I've done quite a lot of traveling in my life. I've lived in numerous different cities um, and just meeting new people that have maybe grown up differently or have different ways of doing things or different social interactions is fascinating to me. So I like to immerse myself in with those people. So I was, you know, trying to go to different restaurants, even if it was by myself and speaking to people and really learning the city, because I think that's growth. And I think that, you know, if we just treat others how we want to be treated and it makes this symbiotic relationship. And I really loved that about Jackson, Mississippi. Everyone there was so excited to have us and so kind um, that I, I love traveling and going to different places. I guess I got to come to Ireland next. <laughs> you have to, you have to, especially yeah. the West Coast of Ireland. I know if you're into medieval sort of castles and sort of cliffs and sort of uh, scenic sort of things going back to the Stone Age, I know, uh, and 
definitely the Viking sort of tradition yeah. is, is are very much still embedded in our sort of uh, culture and my childhood terms of dream. I gotta go live my <laughs> childhood dream. I'm gonna put it at the top Ireland at the top of my list. One of the few places I feel like I haven't I haven't been so. Mm-hmm. And I suppose, Brooke, in a terms of a day to die, how did opportunity come about for you to get cast in the role? Was it a simple uh, agent, talent agent to say, listen, we've got a script came our way. We think this might be suited to you. There's an audition coming up in the spare time. We want you to go in to read for us. Was it the simple sort of routine for that or did it come as a quirky sort of twist to the story? Um, actually the producer, Andrew Vanden Houten produced a film, my very first film that I was ever in this movie called all true leaders die. He produced it and just always had stayed in touch with me and believed in my talent and really saw it on that film just when I was 22. Um, so he called me up and offered me the part and told me what it was about. And I took a look and I read the script and I spoke to Wes, the director and, a week later, I was on my way to Jackson, Mississippi after working with my coach, Lee Kilton Smith, and really creating the arc of Candace. And, you know, it's kind of as simple as that. <laughs> but usually, yes, there's a huge process of auditioning and, you know, fighting your way in. But for me, I think it's always important to me to show up on time and do my work. And I think that the people I've worked with have seen that in me. And, you know, that's true for any industry. You show up you do your work, you be professional, you're prepared and people will want to work with you again. And I suppose, uh, Brooke, in terms of you coming up in 2022 now for the remainder of the year, is there any sort of TV series that are currently in the pipeline or a show that you're currently sort of filming or a movie sort of that we're going to come out later on the year that we might see uh, Brooke uh, Butler uh, coming to our TV screens again in the near future? Yeah, I actually just had three movies come out in a row in the last few months. So that's been extremely Busy girl. <laughs> Yeah. And I have uh, two movie projects that I can't talk about okay. yet that um, will be filmed later this year. And I will let you guys know when I can speak about them. But they're a complete departure from Candace in A Day to Die. Um, one is an extreme drama. One you may see me singing in. <laughs> singing and playing guitar and so um when i can talk about those i will <laughs> okay uh very uh, secret secret and sort of hush hush at the moment from uh, <laughs> in terms i want to get in trouble <laughs> in, in, in terms of 2022 but maybe for the final 30 seconds you might enlighten all our audience here in ireland what's in store for them if they go out and their cinema uh screens and why they should maybe step away from uh, Batman uh, and maybe pop into the, sc- the cinema screen uh, next door and uh, watch uh, A Day to Die and uh, watch A Day to Die has over the Cape Crusader. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see Batman, first of all. <laughs> but second of all, Day to Die has heart. I mean, it's an action film. It never stops moving. You are never bored. But under the guise of an action film, there's such a metaphor of people from different walks of life, from different backgrounds coming together for a common good, which is what is truly the heart of this film and is a metaphor for how we as a people need to learn, even though for from different political backgrounds, different social economic backgrounds coming together for one common good and one common goal. Um, and fighting it to the end and seeing what relationships really matter when it comes down to it. And I think that's something that everybody can relate to. And it's done in this incredible way of action, fun, things blowing up, and then some serious moments and a love story and then relationships and parts where you're heartbroken and who you're rooting for and who survives and who dies and who's the bad guy and who's actually the good guy. There's so many twists throughout So if you really want to go have a fun time and have all those elements and walk out with a few thoughts afterwards about your own life, then a day to die is the direction to go. Okay, uh, Brooke, you've definitely left me intrigued. I know I want to (laughs) more uh, in terms of that sort of statement. And no doubt that that's ecumen for all our uh, movie goers uh, throughout Ireland uh, in terms of the day to die. Uh, That's where we have to leave it for the moment. Uh, Brooke Butler, a pleasure talking to you uh, today uh, in terms of uh, a pioneering day for you, a day to die all out 
over the screens here in Ireland at the moment. And no doubt, Brooke, uh, many more projects in the pipeline in the near future. But for the moment, God bless, stay safe and take care. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ireland. <laughs>